Roughly a decade ago, Human Rights First documented a spike in violent hatred against Jews in Europe. As we all know, that trend has continued and continued to grow. Jewish schools in Europe now have armed guards. Ha hateful graffiti is drawn on billboards and in the subway. Jews remove religious symbols from their homes for fear of being targeted. Synagogues are attacked. In January, the terrorist attack on a kosher market in Paris drew overdue global attention to this problem. Such events are especially alarming on a continent where six million Jews were murdered. But today, there are brave people standing up and pushing back on this tide of hatred, and we are going to honor three of them tonight. Nadal Aljabri from Denmark made international news this year when he organized a human peace chain around a Copenhagen synagogue that had been the site of a deadly shooting. Jane Braden Golay, or originally from Switzerland, was until recently president of the European Union of Jewish Students. She works on building interfaith coalitions, fighting extremism, and promoting Jewish communal life in Europe. And Siavash Durakti is from Sweden. His organization, Young People Against Anti-Semitism and Xenophobia, mobilizes opposition to anti-Semitic violence and organizes trips for young people to Auschwitz. One is Jewish, two are Muslim. All three believe, as Human Rights First does, that the way to defeat anti-Semitism is by building alliances between diverse communities based on our common humanity. These young advocates are taking risks and taking the lead to build a stronger, safer, and more peaceful Europe. Here's a video that will tell you much more. Anti-Semitism is once again on the rise in Europe. Heavily armed, two men entered the building in the center of the French capital late this morning and began firing. Things are unraveling at the seams. Like it just seems to be getting more and more and more scary and concerning. What they're describing is a vehicle pulling up in front of the, uh, the Jewish museum. One or two gunmen opened fire on the crowd. It is very difficult to be a Jew in Malmö today, or in Sweden, or in Europe. And uh, many Jews, they flew from Malmö because they're afraid. Hours later, the gunmen attacked a synagogue, killing a security guard. If we don't do something now, people with a different ethnicity, people with a different religion, they won't be having a future in Europe in 10 years. Anti-Semitism is not just an issue for Jewish groups or Jewish individuals. Anti-Semitism is uh, a human rights threat, a human rights phenomenon, a human rights problem. And it's important, I think, as a predictor of where a society is going. Now that I walk to a synagogue, I will be very conscious of my environment. You start having a queasy feeling in your stomach when you look around and you realize that, is there potentially something that could happen? Because things have happened. Jewish kids go to a school where you have uh, video control all over, you have barbed wire, you have heavily armed police forces standing outside. For me, when I see the rabbi, I see a hero, and I see a tough man. When he walk at the streets, he throwing stones at him or egg at him, and telling him that, go back, you're gonna, we're gonna send you to the gas camp. As an elected president of the European Union of Jewish Students, it is my duty to also speak up and advocate and address as much as I can um, this risk and this threat to Jewish life in Europe. My peers and I today are experiencing threats that, to me, seemed unthinkable to ever reoccur on European soil. My drive to see a flourishing, dynamic, open, healthy, diverse Jewish life in Europe is the one that drives me to fight anti-Semitism. It was important to make a statement that we will not tolerate this, that we will stand together against this. I was the initiative maker to um, the peace ring around the synagogue in Copenhagen. It should not be Muslims doing a peace ring. I wanted it to be Danes, Danish citizens doing a peace ring. I want to stand up for them because they are my brother, sister and cousins. I'm the founder and chairman of Youth Against Antisemitism and Xenophobia. So we do trips like three, four times a year to the concentration camp. When you see what's happened there, you understand what could happen ever today. It's really important that the work that these young people are doing, it spreads, you know, fundamentally. And where communities that aren't themselves directly physically affected in the here and now recognize that threats uh, to Jews in their communities are threats to them and threats to their societies and threats to liberal democracy. We have to be 
together in Europe. We cannot watch and close our eyes. It's really in our hands that if we mobilize, if we inspire, if we get people active on a specific cause, you can make a lot of impact. If you have like organization like Human Rights First, then you, you know that you can go longer because they support you, they support your work. Fundamentally, what's happening in communities is going to dictate whether or not anti-Semitism rises or whether or not it is quashed. So when a group decides to hone in on something like anti-Semitism with all the tools that Human Rights First has brought to bear and a whole series of other human rights uh, crises, people take notice. And they say this isn't something that should be ghettoized over here, this is something that all of us as citizens have a responsibility to combat. I feel right now we're in such an extreme time and I really hope that we swing back to a Europe where we recognize the values of the communities and peoples living here. In the next couple of years, I'll hopefully have children, and I dream of them growing up as happy, proud Jews, and that they are so confident being a European Jew. They're willing to build bridges and connections and a future for everyone in Europe. May I be the first to welcome you and to congratulate you on this, on this award. You so deserve it. You really are remarkable and inspirational young people trying to make a difference in a very difficult world. So we applaud you, all of us. Thank you. We have a few minutes for a discussion. And I want to start with, uh, by mentioning a cover story in Atlantic Monthly magazine. You may know this. It was a few months back. In light of rising anti-Semitism, the story's headline asked, is it time for Jews to leave Europe, and the author, American Jeffrey Goldberg, ended the piece by stating he believes he's alive today because his ancestors got out while they could. Jane, if I could start with you, tell us exactly what is happening with anti-Semitism in Europe and why. Well, first of all, it's very important to understand that there is not one story of anti-Semitism in Europe. Europe is a very diverse continent, and as we have seen anti-Semitism rise, we've also understood that in every single city, in every single neighborhood, it is a variety of aspects that come together and that have created this phenomenon. Amongst that is the rise of the far right. It is the rise of Islamist extremism. It's also far left activism. All of this has created a toxic combination that has now led to the situation that we are so concerned about. 7,000 Jews left France last year, 7,000. What do you say to people who believe that they should leave Europe for safety reasons? Well, I will never tell anyone what personal choice they should make, especially in regards to also the future of their families. However, me and many of my peers are truly invested in the future of Europe, and we really believe that Jews have a future. This might seem a bit shocking given the headlines that you are familiar with, but we also see a lot of the revival and a lot of the beauty that has been built over the last couple of years. And I simply do not want to give this up. I truly care about what happens in Europe, and not just for the Jewish community, but for different minority communities and other groups that have been suffering from discrimination now. And the only option I see is to work at it and to build bridges with others to do that. Nadal, do you agree with that? I do agree with that. It's very important. With a Muslim background, you identify that uh, times are getting more difficult and uh, one thing that I do know is we come with a short heritage in Europe and kind of in a, some way still learning. I th believe that the Jews who have a, a far bigger history and a much more um, important history, um, we cannot battle this without them. So for the sake of their children, I respect their choices, but for the sake of our continent, I hope they'll stay. They hope they'll stay. And Siavos, do you agree as well? Yes. Uh, the first question I always get outside Malmo is that if the rabbi is still alive, am I scared that uh, the, Jew, the Jew is going to leave Malmo? And a couple of years ago, it was like 1,000 Jews who were a member of the Jewish community. Today, it's under 400 members. And if they leave, it's not going to be the same in my city. But Siavis, you were telling me when we were in the green room before we came out here that your life is at risk every day because of what you do. Yeah. That you now have a bodyguard because yeah. you're, you've been threatened, your parents have been threatened. 
I get a lot of threats, you know, from the uh, extreme left wings, extreme right wings, and also radical Islamists. So for me, that's my reality, but I'm not scared. I'm not scared for me. Why aren't you scared? Because I grew up with my best friend who was a Jew. And we always stood up for, uh, together. And he stood up for me as a Muslim, and I stood up for me as a Jew. And for me, is that if I'm a Muslim, stood up for me as a Jew today, he's going to stood up for me as a Muslim tomorrow. And that's his fact. Nadal, we, we uh, mentioned the thousand person peace ring that you um, formed around a synagogue in Copenhagen after a brutal killing there. Um, and you were denouncing hate crimes and also calling for people of all religions to come together. So that, in a way, was your moment of truth, the attack on that synagogue. It was. You know, me and my wife, we've been working for quite some years now on creating tolerance and equality for minorities. But it wasn't until the shooting that I understood that a guy had just been killed only because of his religion. It was pure hatred, and he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. For me, I realized that I have a son, and there was another guy there who had his daughter, and he's Jew, and I want to create a safe world for my son, but I also want every kid to be safe. So for me, he became that identification that we need to help the Jews in this fight as well. And me, with my Palestinian background, considered it being a great role model in terms of getting this dialogue going. How old is your son? He's two years old today. Two years old, okay. Yeah. Oh, today? No, <laughs> in a week, actually. Okay, anyway. <laughs> well, happy birthday in a minute. Siavo, what was your moment of truth? Uh, first of all, uh, when I was like seven years old, I grew up with my best friend David. Uh, he was a Jew, I told you. And uh, when I was like 14 years old, I was like a bad boy, and my <laughs> dad decided to take me to Auschwitz for the first time. And when I saw the scene, I saw the Albert Mark fight, and he told me that this is going to happen to you if you don't stand up for your friend it's to be a Jew. Wow. Does your friend get threats because he's associated yeah. with you? It was one uh, accident. He came to me in the classroom and told me, see ya, see ya, see ya. They asked me where I came from, if I'm a Jew. What am I going to tell them? And I stand up and say, come on, we go out to fight. You're going to tell them that you're a Jew. <laughs> so be proud. <laughs> so for us, was that the reality? So. And you went and confronted them? And yeah. What happened? <laughs> we fight. <laughs> oh, you fought, OK. Yeah. <laughs> Who won? We won. OK. <laughs> Always. You know, anti-Semitism is an old story in Europe. And the US has been a great deal of focus on how Islamist extremists are contributing to the problem in Europe today. How much should we focus on Islamic extremists in our efforts to fight anti-Semitism, Jane? What do you think? Well, I think we really need to remember that anti-Semitism is a very old virus in Europe. And if we want to combat it, we need a cocktail of measures. And to that degree, we can not only focus on the Muslim community. I'm very proud to be sitting here with two Muslim activists, but I really urge you to recognize that it is by far not only a threat from within Muslim extremists, it is from the extreme right, which actually is sweeping European countries right now. And that is actually a joint concern that all of us activists here have to Why make. do you think that's happening right now? Well, I think we are in very unstable times. We've had an economic crisis mm -hmm. in Europe. There's a refugee crisis. And parties have understood that playing these politics, playing on an othering, drawing comparisons of how different and how unwelcome others are, they're able to score points. And with every attack, um, with every other instance, they just jump on it and they prey on vulnerable situations. And this is really problematic. And we as activists are truly hoping to reclaim that ground, to reclaim the narrative, to not let them run away each time with the prize, so to say. Given the rise in anti-Semitism, Nadal, what keeps your faith? My faith is, well, you know, let's talk about that for a second, because in, when we were in what we call the green room, mm -hmm. you asked us whether we were experiencing threats, and see of us is through some horrible things. On the contrary, I've been reaching out to the Jewish community and I've been expressing my companion, companion and compassion over these prior last nine months and we don't receive any threats. 
We have a wide scale of support. All of our friends endorse us and help us, and they stand together with us. They have understood when the attack hit Copenhagen, they learned to reflect what is the real issue. We learned not to put Jews in Israel and that conflict. We decided that that conflict is gonna stay there, and we here, we need to fight the battle, let's call it that for a moment, that we are facing in, in Europe. How do you feel about putting an emphasis on uh, these Islamist extremists in this fight against anti-Semitism? It's extremely important. You need to understand that there have been some terrible incidents over the last decade, and especially this year in Europe. Uh, every time these um, Islamic extremists, they hit, we as Muslims, 99.99999%, we get extremely sad over this. We know that we're gonna be taken into custody for their actions. We know we're gonna have to uh, say, we, we, we literally are being demanded to post in any way or anywhere that we do not support that. It's kind of not a common or accepted thing that that's just that how it's gonna be. So for us, this is a really difficult time because it's not only that, but it's our kids that are being recruited to these environments, yeah. and we need to protect that. And when we reach out for help, when we see it happening, the government does not step in until the damage has been done. Why? Why doesn't the government step in, Siavos? Excuse me? Why doesn't the government step in? I've heard that from all three of you. I can tell you something. In the last five years, I get the honor to two years ago meet the U.S. President Barack Obama in Sweden. It took me five years to get a meeting with the uh, Malmo's politicians and the mayor of Malmo. So for me, they're telling everything. But what, why, why are they burying their head in the sand or allowing it to happen? I, t I think they're, they're afraid of something. I don't know why, but when we spoke with them and talked to them and talked to the Jewish community, uh, they're telling us that they don't support them in this work that we combat this anti-Semitism. And when you see the radical Islamists, it's not only that we're going to focus on the radical Islamists. We also have a, a, a focus on the left extremists and the right-wing extremists because to combat this issue. Uh, and that's why we have these youth ambassadors and we also make education trips to Auschwitz-Birkenau. Knowing, knowing what you're up against in your lifetime, do you believe you'll see some resolution? Excuse me? Do you believe in your lifetime you will see some resolution? I hope so. I hope so. If I don't believe it, I can give it up. Yeah. Jane? Well, I think it can get better. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to get rid of anything. Uh, if there's anything I've understood from history, that's just simply not how it works. And every generation has its own battle. But that's not going to cause me to not join the battle. So what is your dream then for the future? Mm. Well, I really hope that many children will have a childhood that I had in Switzerland, which was one that despite being part of a minority community, I felt proud, I loved to engage others in my culture and my heritage, and it just felt great to be a Jew in Europe, and I want that to be the future. And Adal, what is your hope for the future? Actually, I got a new dream on my visit in Washington. <laughs> what, what was it? <laughs> When I visited the State Department, I got a dream. I got a dream that the Palestinian flag will be raised among all the other flags and that the country will, will be recognized by the United States. Well, hold on to that dream for sure. I am. Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah, you'll be back. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much, C.E. Jane Nadal. Human Rights First is so proud to honor you with this annual Human Rights Award. Thank you for sharing your stories with us. Thank you for the work you do every day. We applaud you.